Good evening. We begin with breaking news this hour. Former Reserve Bank Governor and Minister of Finance, Tito Titus Mboweni, has passed away. According to a statement from the family, he died in a Johannesburg hospital on Saturday night, surrounded by his loved ones. The family has requested privacy during this difficult time as they cope with the profound loss. Further details will be shared in the coming days. All right, uh, let's uh, now cross on over to our politics uh, editor, Mzwandi Lembej, and he joins us now uh, via our telephone li line. Mzwai, of course, uh, you know, uh, very shocking news uh, coming in uh, this afternoon. Are you just as shocked as I am? Well, a very good evening to you, Mbalin, the viewers. There is, this is quite uh, shocking. I mean, we never expected this, um, and of course, we never know... Um, when someone will pass on, but obviously for someone as um, healthy and lively as uh, the former minister and the former governor of the Reserve Bank, Dembowini, it is quite shocking. I mean, uh, many South Africans, since he left office, I, office, I used to him really uh, cooking, making jokes, and they'll make fun of that. And I think that's what we've got used to him uh, outside of his uh, office. Um, now that he's no longer, I mean, he was no longer a government official, to hear news of this nature, and uh, it, it's quite a shock. Mm. What do we know so far, Mzwai, when it comes uh, to the details surrounding, uh, you know, his death? I mean, the family statement saying here that, uh, you know, the passing uh, comes after a short illness. It seems as if he hasn't been sick for a while. I think that's why we are all shocked, because we, 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 we really haven't had I mean, anything, um, as I've said, Mbali, I mean, other than him being the former minister, being the governor of the Reserve Bank, um, I mean, he was someone who was very uh, joyful, very engaging, particularly on earth, because uh, we, we, we got used to him, really. We got used to his uh, private life, particularly that of um, uh, cooking. And sometimes he would make um, the comments uh, about the... The, 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 the national issues, uh, sometimes he would make it in a jocular way, uh, whether it relates to his ANT, whether he's complaining about MK, uh, which has eaten into the party, uh, whether he would be wanting to perhaps uh, having a meeting with Malema to discuss uh, a number of issues. I think that's the kind of person that, um, outside of who he was in terms of his politics, and, and, and just uh, to um, uh, just before you go to bed, you hear news of this nature without hearing anything about his illness. Um, and of course, the family has clarified that it was short illness, and then I guess that's why uh, it's, it's, it's even a shock to them, and then of course, to all South Africans. Mm. I mean, yeah, it's, it's quite a loss, uh, given the kind of a person he was. Uh, I mean, he was one of the persons in Bali who was appointed as a minister, I think as a Labour minister, very, very young. And uh, from there, he became the governor of the Reserve Bank, and I think for two terms. And then he went out, and then he, he came back as the finance minister. And you'd recall that when he was, um, was brought back as the finance minister, that's when Ntlantanene uh, had to leave uh, the office because there were issues around the Guptas. I think the president, uh, the current president, President uh, Ramaphosa, I think wanted someone who would be able to really uh, fill into the into those shoes and get the work done. So and then didn't they were not able to do that. And then of course uh, at some point then expressed that so he would want to, to retire from public office and then he was granted that wish when the president was shuffled. So it was it, it is really um, uh, something that is really sad for South Africans and a great 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 loss. Mm. And maybe let's talk about uh, his last stint uh, in government and something that uh, you touched briefly on, and that's uh, his tenure as uh, the finance minister from 2018 until 2022. I mean, what kind of legacy do we talk about, particularly uh, when we look at his uh, tenure as a finance minister? You know, um, what, what, what we are busy speaking with now, about now, Mbadi, uh, there's this thing called the two-pot system uh, that, uh, I mean, I was just reading um, how many uh, people have accessed that and uh, the kind of money that have been dispersed through the two-pot system. That, is, that came up under him. 
uh, before he left office. So when he he, he basically uh, publicly said, you know, South Africans are struggling there, but you know, some of them do have resources to be able to manage um, some of their difficulties. So why can't we make a a a a, a, a situation where they'll be able to somehow access? some of their funds. Obviously, the detail was not there at the moment, but it is something that came uh, from him. And I think uh, that is one of the great legacies. If you look at the kind of response of those people who, who went and accessed uh, the, 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 the two-pot system and then the kind of money that has been dispersed already. So, and then, of course, there's a lot more, and um, even his style of leadership. So it was, it, it, it was quite interesting. So... Uh, the power of saying um, I mean to hear such news in such manner is really really a shocker mm. let's also talk about his style of leadership Abzwise, particularly when he was finance minister and of course uh, you know the position of the unions and uh, the stance uh, he took uh, particularly uh, when it came to that uh, three-year wage agreement and uh, you know when the unions expressed their dissatisfaction uh, with some of the decisions uh, that he took uh, particularly uh, surrounding uh, uh, you know some of the deals that were signed uh, when he was uh, Finance Minister. Yeah, you, you see, uh, Minister Mboweni, um, uh, when he was still minister, he was uh, he was very forthright uh, on, on so many issues, and I think uh, uh, perhaps um, and, and, and perhaps others would even it bordered on 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 on, on, on arrogance. Uh, that's how sometimes he would express himself. But I guess it was the nature of who he was, and this is someone who understood. I mean, uh, the kind of work that had been entrusted to him. I mean, he, even if you go beyond um, Bali uh, from his position as finance minister, you know, uh, he was once the labor minister. And then from there, then he was assigned the responsibility of being the Reserve, the reserve Bank governor. So that does tell you that it's someone who had, I mean, high intellect, I mean, educated abroad, quite clear in terms of what he wanted and of course i mean he had all he had his detractors um i mean like in life um, and everyone will have uh, good things to be said about him or her but there will be those who may not be suddenly impressed about how you manage certain things but i think we can all agree that uh, i mean uh, former minister boweni uh, the former uh, governor of the reserve bank so was one of the very bright individuals, whether as a minister or as a reserve bank governor. So whether you agreed with him on certain issues, so it's neither here nor there. So the first of the matter is that he understood uh, the kind of responsibilities that were given to him. Mm. And so I, uh, while you do highlight the fact that, uh, you know, uh, to some he came across as a very arrogant uh, minister. At the same time, uh, those of us who are on social media also got to experience a different side to him, uh, particularly when it came to his pilchards uh, loving cooking lessons, uh, which he often held on social media. Oh, yes. Uh, that was quite big. Um, I think once he left public office, he then got the time to really express himself as an ordinary man, not only the cooking and body. I mean, who can uh, forget his shoes, those shoes that he wouldn't want, I think those boots that he really wouldn't want to change. And then um, the social media was always on, his, uh, on him to say, well, we can see, and you, you dress maybe better today, but please change the shoes. And then sometimes he will go for that banter, he will exchange views, he will say, I've listened, or I'm not changing, or I've changed. So he basically led us in, in his life, and uh, we know his love for uh, the pictures and the cooking, and South Africa really went in on that aspect, uh, and some, sometimes we would advise him, so how we should do it, and all those things, and how he used to put the onions and stuff like that. I mean, the fact in Bali that we are able to speak about this is because once he left public office, he really let loose in terms of his um, private life, particularly uh, uh, what he wanted to do. And I think that's always been um, perhaps his wish uh, to also not just appear as someone who's minister, uh, but someone who also uh, is just an ordinary human being. Even when I, I remember when I uh, think certain privileges 
uh, were taken away from him. I think he was at the airport. And when he complained to say, ah, now that I'm not the minister, so I'm not able to go out into to the lounge or something like that. And then people were saying, wow, you are so entitled. So, and and, and you, you could sense that sometimes he enjoyed that, to say, okay, I'll just speak my mind. It doesn't matter what people were saying. I'll just speak my mind. And then the people will just have to deal with it. So maybe I guess that, that, that is the part perhaps about arrogance where it would come in. But uh, generally, I think uh, the former minister Mbawini was, uh, I mean, appeared like a, a, a very genuine somebody uh, in doing whatever he was doing, whether public or private. Oh, all right. Uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for your time.